Hey, Andy here. I was talking to a customer the other day and realized I had not made a video about Rancher Multi-Cluster Manager talking to other cloud providers to deploy clusters. I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a video not only for them, but potentially for you too. So I've got here rancher.rfed.io. It's a three node cluster running in DigitalOcean. Now in, in Rancher, it shows up as the local cluster. And what I've gone and done is use the cluster manager to build an EC2 cluster in Amazon. What we're going to do, we're going to take this a step further, is I've already integrated the uh, a harvester node. This is my MSO1 little Minisforms box in my closet. I've already added it to Rancher, so now I can manage it, and I can even create a cluster just like I did in AWS. So... Let's walk through the process just to kind of understand. So we're going to call this MSO1 because it's using my MSO1. Uh, yeah, two core, four gigs of RAM. We're just going to do one control plane node. We're going to put it in the default workspace. I know I'm going to use Rocky for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Rocky image. What's kind of cool is it's actually pulling the images from Harvester itself. But I'm going to use Rocky. We'll leave it at 40 because we're not putting a whole lot on there. We'll put it on the VLAN 1. And the nice thing is I can select versions if I wanted to. I can go and select different providers. I'm going to use uh, Canal, keep it simple. And let me go ahead and add another pool. So pool one would be like for uh, the control plane. Pool two would be for workers. We're going to follow everything the same. We don't have to change a thing. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to up the, the machine count. So we're going to have a total of three nodes built. Let me go ahead and hit create. And, oh, MSO1 already exists, so let me do MSO2. I was demoing this to a customer earlier, so it must have the cluster config somewhere. So cool, now it's building MSO2. But the cool part about it is it's building, uh, so I've got Rancher and DigitalOcean talking to Harvester here at my house. And within a few seconds, we should see the VMs actually start to get uh, registered and configed. Um, just while we're waiting, up oh, there, there's one, perfect. There we go, there's all three. And just to show you kind of that integration, if we go under advanced settings, all you simply have to do is add a client registration URL. And this tells Harvester, hey, by the way, apply this YAML, the YAML comes from that server, it's got all the credentials and keys in it, Bob's your uncle, okay? So again, we've got Rancher in the cloud and DigitalOcean, now scheduling a cluster in Harvester on-prem. Okay, kind of wild. Now let me show you how I deployed the uh, AWS dev cluster. So go back here, go to dev AWS. The way I deployed it is using uh, a Helm chart that we've generated called Rancher Cluster Templates. I'll put the link in the show notes. And this allows me, this is a Helm chart that allows me to give it a, a pretty fat values YAML and go ahead and build the cluster talking to AWS. So let me show you what my code looks like. So I have this whole Git repo here. And I'm using a tool called Fleet. So let me go show you that real quick. I know I'm bouncing around, but sorry. <laughs> uh, go to Git repos, make sure I'm looking at the right namespace. So I've used Fleet to automatically deploy a bunch of applications, one of which is that downstream. So if we go back to my Fleet, the Git repo for the downstream clusters is right here. And I simply say, go look at that template directory. That's pretty simple. If we go look at the template directory, I've got dev, DigitalOcean dev, harvester, prod. Now the one we're only working with notice is fleet.yaml.disabled. Fleet.yaml.disabled, if I go to dev, fleet yaml. And all this fleet yaml says is, hey, by the way, go ahead and use the local values and use that cluster templates Helm chart. If we look at the values, the nice thing is the values, it says, okay, what's the cloud provider? Which credential? That's a secret I've created ahead of time on my cluster. Which uh, Kubernetes version to install? Where's the system registry? What are the Kubernetes settings? So this actually is deploying it stigged, which is really cool. I can go and create my node pools. And you can see I've got a node pool that says control plane nodes. I've got one further down that says worker node, right? What's also kind of interesting under user data is I can use cloud init. So I can say, install these packages, write the kernel tuning parameters, write the audit policy, write the uh, uh, PSA, PS, PSS, uh, which is the pod security admi uh, admission controller kind of setting. So I've I've allowed listed a bunch of namespaces. Oh, I can run a bunch of commands. There's the worker nodes dev, right? So same kind of thing. 
build what, where, when, how, why, right? And the cool part is down at the bottom, I've got to comment that out right now, but they've added add-ons for other applications. So if I wanted to pre-install, say, the monitoring stack or Longhorn or New Vector or play with K3, oh, that's part of the New Vector, but I could go ahead and do it all within the same cluster template, which means I can then use a Git repo, right? Because remember, Fleet's looking at this Git repo to automatically deploy, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. Our nodes are up. There's something weird on my harvester. The IPs aren't showing up quickly, but they're there. They're working. We can go back to Rancher. We can see that MSO2 is still coming up. We can go back to the cluster management. We can look at the provisioning log. We can see it's waiting for the nodes to come up, but you can see our machine pools. Okay, so what is what is all that fleet and stuff really kind of get you at the end of the day? Is a cluster fully deployed using the cluster templates, right? But we can actually go into it, and this is kind of cool. This is what I really like about the Rancher Multi-Cluster Manager, is let's say I wanted to actually get connected to that node. I can actually get an SSH shell. And here I've got running through Rancher, through the single RBAC, through the single HTTPS connection, I now have an SSH connection to my downstream cluster, to my downstream node running in AWS. Now, mind you, I'm talking to a, to Rancher in DigitalOcean, so it's not in the same data center, and you can see how performant it is. We can run a top, we can run anything we want, hit the one key so we can see it's a chunky node, eight core, 32 gigs of RAM, right? I have full administrative access to the node, and I don't, I don't even have to know how the node was made, which is great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's go back to Cluster Manager, MSO1, MSO2, I mean, provisioning logs. Yep, we can see it's coming up. It does take about five, five to six minutes, depending on the cloud provider, to actually go ahead and create the VMs. Because one of the things that's happening in the back end is uh, ranchers asking for the VMs to be created, but then it's also installing, it's running a script that's installing RKA2 as per the configs. And then it's configuring RKA2 to connect back up to the rancher instance. Okay, case in point, if we go to the dev AWS, I can go to apps, which is our app catalog. I can go ahead and click monitoring and I can start to administrate it just like I normally would. So this truly is kind of demonstrating multi-cloud management. And I'll let that run for a second. Um, <clears throat> Go back and check our MSO2, check the logs. Logs are looking good. We can go back to Harvester. We've got our IPs. Um, one of the cool things about Harvester is we can actually go directly into the VM, right? So there's my console. But one of the other advantages also of using the Rancher integration is I can go under the Virtualization Management tab. And notice I can see, I can go ahead and click Manage. And this will actually, that manages it when I click the wrong button. Click the name, and now I actually get a full. Uh, we can close this out. This is going to exceed, uh, succeed. Is now I'm actually looking. I'm managing Harvester itself directly from the Rancher GUI. It's effectively proxying it through. So now I can look at the virtual machines. I can look at the volumes. I can look at the images. I can look at the projects and namespaces and networks. I can look at all of the things that make up Harvester from Rancher really powerful in terms of single pane of glass trying to manage everything go back here we should be getting pretty close at this point then go back to provisioning logs waiting for cluster agent to connect so that's the agent running on the rke2 on that cluster talking back out up to rancher and we'll go back and see if our monitoring stack is the yet monitoring we'll go to grafana cool so it's the stuff starting to check in so I can deploy applications just like I normally would to a downstream cluster. I can even use Fleet to be programmatic about downloading applications and installing them on those downstream clusters. Uh, cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause. Let's go ahead and pause real quick. Uh, it's been seven minutes. <laughs> Future Andy here. It came up, MS, MS2, MSO2 came up. Uh, it just took a few minutes. Let me just show you real quick. Cluster Manager, MSO2. Uh, that test one is the one we created and didn't add. But notice everything came up. We can go look at the provisioning logs. And now it's completely available to do app catalog-y things or anything like that. See? It worked. I was just being impatient. Thanks. My home network must be a little slow at the moment. Seeing the logs. Yep. Okay, there we go. Join your available to bootstrap. Okay, awesome. Configuring worker nodes. We're not going to pause. Cool. My first... RKE nodes up and running, and again, SSH shell, 
Actually, that won't work because I can't SSH from Rancher through uh, because of the network. Uh, I'm on a non-routable home network. But we can see, okay, we're waiting for the machines, the, the two workers to come up. So come up in a second. Come on. Uh, speaking of application deployment lifecycle, right? I talked about the app catalog. You can import a YAML. Don't ever do that. But that is a way to do it in a dev cluster if you need it. You saw me hit playing around on the shell. By the way, this is the shell running on the AWS cluster. This does take a sec to connect and download. Kubectl get node or kubectl get pod. And you can see all the pods in the cluster. So import YAML is one, shell is two. Download kube config for your machine is three. Number four is app catalog. And then number five obviously is the continuous delivery with fleet. And just to kind of show you real quick, Go to the Git repos. You can see I've got my apps here. I've got an app called Flask. I have an app called Ghost. Who am I? Versions. And to keep me honest, we can go and we can look at the ingress object here. Oops, click on that. We can see the ingress objects. Click on that, and boom, there's our web app. Okay. I was really hoping that, that uh, the cluster management would spin up much faster. One out of three. That's interesting, those two. Waiting for those nodes to come live. Uh, I guess my server at home isn't running as, as well as I thought it would. That's okay. You can kind of get the gist about how you can kind of create. Uh, one other thing I kind of want to highlight, last but not least, is we can talk to a lot of other different cloud providers. We can talk to EKS and GKE and EC2 and DigitalOcean and, and vSphere. We also have this custom option. So if you just have access to VMs on bare metal, great. Just spin up the VM, go in here, and we'll do a test. Uh, test. You can see that that's going to give us we all the same kind of configuration options. And then we go ahead and hit create, and it literally will give us a curl pipe bash, uh, check in secure, right? But a curl pipe bash to run on the node. So you can see a lot of different ways to kind of create clusters and really take advantage of that multi-cluster management. And I am really disappointed the other nodes didn't come up. This worked an hour ago on our demo. <sighs> Too funny. Oh, well, I'm not going to keep you. I hope this helps uh, kind of highlight the power of multi-cluster manager, the cluster templates, all and how they all integrate together. Uh, you know the story, like, share, and subscribe. And feel free to reach out if you've got any other questions. Thanks for watching.